and the three of us came together. So we had two, two former Royal Marines and an Afghan Brit. James's dad went over in the late 80s, early 90s, and embedded himself with the Mujahideen for ITN. But sometimes you need a bit of courage to tell a story, to tell an authentic story. The Taliban had already increased their attacks, a um, lot more attacks happening. We lost four people who helped us in the first trip. They were assassinated. Marty, how are you, brother? I'm good. How are you? Yes, it's been too long, mate. Been too long, isn't it? Yeah, been. I think been too long for a reason. I think I maybe mean, both of us needed that sort of space. And yeah, well, I think we're both in a really good position to talk now. Uh, I think the last time was March, March, April last year. So I think well, we've, we've spoke obviously via message and stuff like that. But um, for from a podcasting point of view, I think the the delay's been for a reason. Like um, yeah, which we can talk about in a minute. <laughs> Yes, because uh, friends at home, Marty was our producer for a while, did an outstanding job on the podcast and really uh, um, <clears throat> took, took us to, to, to another level <laughs> <laughs> with his uh, incredible uh, artistic skill and also um, just perception as a person, Marty, you, you when you get a producer that you can just run anything by, it takes so much like stress off your shoulders. Um, it's a funny world, isn't it? It, it? To when you interact with people that let's just use the cliche terms who either live in a matrix or they don't. It, yep. It's it just, I sit down and I say to my girlfriend all the time, this is so bizarre. It's so bizarre that they walk amongst us. Yeah. And I mean that, but it goes both ways. Yeah, yeah. And we interact on a daily basis like this, and yet we live in totally different worlds. Yeah. And friends, uh, there's not a judgment call whatsoever because we used to be, we all used to live in the matrix. It's, it's, it, you you you're you're kind of born into left brain thinking from birth for 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 a reason. Yeah. But um, it was good when we met Marty because I think it, a lot was happening in the world. Yeah. There was this uh, move, big movement. Uh, has a has a letter. Everyone knows <laughs> the one I'm on about, and and it was <laughs> it was throwing up a lot of stuff, wasn't it? Yeah, a lot of lot of positive and negative um, energies. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we talked about this before in the prep. There, just yeah, it's 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 easy to get engulfed by it and swamped. And and that you, you with your own research, you just get a little bit immersed in it all. But sometimes you need someone in your life to go look. Look, you need to just really question what you're what you're reading, what you're seeing, and question everything. Basically, believe in nothing, question everything. Is, is sort of what I sort of go with. And even some of the research that I was reading and having to fact check and check the source. And as soon as I distanced myself from that really intense um, period of research, then my energy started to get better. And uh, I could start, I, I, I had, had that balance back, which before it was very much research, 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 sort of over research in a sense. And it clouded a lot of my own judgments. But as soon as I distanced myself back, uh, sorry, away from the research, and started to sort of go with what I've always gone with with in the military and also in, in, in my adult life is my gut. I've always gone with my gut and, um, and common sense and sort of slowed the research down and really got more sort of um, high quality research rather than quantity of research. So yeah, that's, that's it, the last sort of 14, 15 months for me have just been incredibly life-changing in a good way. And there's another factor there, Marcy, isn't there, is we really need to ask ourselves, why are we involving ourselves in this research or this particular strain? Of what, what, what's going on with ourselves? What, what, um, because if the answer comes out that, that you're deflecting from your own troubles in life, 
yeah that you're casting aspersions or, or whatever onto others because it makes you feel there's kind of like an issue there isn't there yeah definitely yeah and what, what i've what i've personally experienced through my plant medicine journey is the not everybody not everybody as you mentioned before there's 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 people who are on who who are not in the matrix and people are who are in the matrix and there's the balance there the whole part of being on this earth that i believe and being in this human flesh is is, is to is to discover the reasons why we're on this universe in this universe and in this world and some people don't get get that eureka moments until they die but some people get it early on in life. Some people get it in, in, in the middle of their life. Some people get it towards the end of their life. You know, that's part of the beautiful journey. And I always say the journey is both a bastard and a beautiful one. Because when, you're, when you are opened up to why I believe is to be why we're here on this earth and in this universe, it's, it's just incredibly beautiful. Um, you, re- you realize people are all, it sounds quite cheesy, but we are all one. There's no boundaries. There's no country names. There's no names. There's no flags. There's no, no, you know, it's just, it, it just makes sense when you're, when, when you've been opened up to all this and, uh, and you sort of sit back and go, this, this is, it's all part of the journey. You know, some of my most ed- educated family members are the most entrenched and have the most sort of cognitive dissonance, which is one of the most used words amongst the community over the last year. But yeah, it's, it, it's just beautiful when you sit back and you, and, and you, and you know, well, I personally know why I'm here and I've found my true sense of purpose, through, which is through the plant medicines have helped me find what my true sense of, my sense of purpose on this earth is. It's absolutely beautiful. And there's so many, as you know, so many lost people here in on this earth, so many lost human, human spirits. And all you can do is leave breadcrumbs out. What I've learned the hard way is you can't, you can't help people. Well, you can help, but you can't make people think differently. They've had so many years of, of propaganda and bias, and all you got to do is leave breadcrumbs out, and they will. some of them will find their way eventually. But what I learned over the last 15 months from our last podcast is um, you, can't, you just can't make people think differently. They've got to do it on their own. Everyone's on their own personal and independent journeys. And, it, and I said before, it's both a beautiful and a bastard one, so... Do you think that by working on ourselves, Marty, and getting our own shop in order, yep. that has a knock-on effect that people are like looking and going, why is, yeah. this, why is this guy always happy? What, yeah, what, I mean, I, I'd, I'd be on TV sets and, I, 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 as you know, TV and film were allowed to sort of stay open during the um, the pandemics and um, we, were, we were heavily tested each day. and But it, it got quickly around the around the cruise how i how my how i thought of the whole thing and my mindset and i was respectful i, I wore a mask on set all day which was horrific and um i was respectful to the rules because i needed to work i needed to because i couldn't get any any of the um, the handouts that well i didn't want the handout anyway but it's it, it, people were very much like they knew me anyway from the industry they knew how i was normal by it's their eyes they were just i was just normal i was i was you know i was marty on set but they just couldn't get their head around the fact that i was so you know so against what was going on and so assertive with my own sort of belief systems and what was happening and they would say to me like my you, you're such a switched on guy I, I just don't understand why you're telling me about this stuff and that was the mindset and um yeah it, it's i've just solely okay don't get me wrong it hasn't been per- it hasn't been a perfect journey for me but looking at myself, I knew that. Well, I've all, I've actually been shown this. I've actually been shown what's going to happen. Not specifically in the next few years, but I know the next few years are going to be rough for a lot, a lot of people. And I and I can only be the best father to my three children if 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 I am I need to be one hundred percent. Well, actually, no one's ever one hundred percent, but I need to be right and ready to go for the sake of my children. And you know, if I ever meet somebody and a partner down the line. I need to be ready for them as well. So it, it, that, that's not a priority, by the way, but it's just, it's always about number one. You have to square yourself away first. And it is a little bit, it's not being selfish. It's just, you need to square yourself away. Uh, I'm not just saying spiritual now. I'm saying everything from what you put in your body to what you're reading and researching and and and, and, and everything all is, is 
about a certain, you know, a, a certain amount of rules that you must sort of uh, abide by, and you will find that sort of balance. And but all I, you're right, it, it's got to start with you, number one. Um, square yourself away, and then move forward. And, and I mean, I think my kids are going to need me over the next few years. They are going to need me massively, um, just like yourself with your, with your own son. So you just, you, we just need to be ready, mate. And um, the joy, the joy of what I'm experiencing is we talked about synchronicity last year and about how I'm starting to slowly, people are starting to come out of the woodwork and starting to sort of approach me and, and have the same sort of um, thought process. That over the last, I would say, 12 months, that's been on steroids in a sense that it's been amplified. The synchronicity is in Ireland anyway. I, I believe Ireland is the heart of the world. It's got very, very special people here. It's got very spiritual people here, especially the women. The women here are, are extremely spiritual and they have a lot of, lot of energy good energy and 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 trust me if you've ever been to ireland it, it, I'm not just talking about the land the beautiful landscapes here i'm just talking about the people here and that is why i feel that they've been suppressed the most but let's not go into that so um yeah so yeah it all comes down to number one and yeah you've got to you've got to be ready and uh the amount of people that i've met the amount of people that my, my, my circle now has got a lot bigger in who I trust with, with research, who I trust with my own thoughts. Um, it's more of a collective sort of cleansing, collective therapy at the moment because we are all coming together. We all have different skills. Mm. We all, and we all, we all, we all, most of us have done really, really well in life. I'd say all of us, to be honest. But we've all come together and we found each other. And when we're together, we're, we're, we're unbeatable. And it sounds quite cheesy, but this is this is a micro study of what could happen with the rest of the world if we all just came together. Well, let let let, let let's be honest. It, it is what's happening to the world. We we yeah we are going to win this one, Marty. <clears throat> you no, know? and it was, w- w- win is too strong a word. The, yeah, the the truth will bear out. Yeah, light versus darkness. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Um, it will. It can seem quite daunting, especially when you see the extent of the indoctrination that the, the system puts upon upon yep. people. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna write a word down here for our, for our friends listening. <laughs> Marty said something earlier. He said when you work out what it's all about. Yeah, if you can work that out, you're not just in the one percent. You're probably in. My mass isn't good at the best of times, but something like the 0.001% of people, not just on this planet, but who have ever lived that died understanding what they were here for. I'm going to write the word down on my paper. If you know it, put it in the comment section. Oh, interactive. Somebody can read pen now. They can hear me scrolling. <laughs> and one second. Cover tea inbound. <laughs> That's a kilo Colombian. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Put me on order as well. There's, yeah. <laughs> I tell you, we don't do surreptitious in this family. It, it's... Yeah, yeah. I like it. It's normal. Um, yeah. <laughs> Folks, I've written one word down here. I'll flash it up in the community, um, in a community post after this podcast is aired. It's about one thing. That's it. And when you suss it, yeah. pretty bloody pretty simple really yeah yeah so yes well i'm really happy for you marty and and but also i have to thank you because um it's been a difficult times for people and i don't mean the people that are scared because they're still plugged into that bloody dreaded mainstream media and actually believe it still yeah i mean the people the the um the people out there that live in the, the the light that really understand what's going on have had to live watching 
just the massive lie that's been put on on the whole of humanity and and it, it's along with all those individuals that have just kept up the good fight just massive thank you um you, you you're not alone there's way more of you than uh, than you think for anyone listening now that's like whoa just keep your ears open hang in there and you might learn something useful you you might not um but what i can say is my god living in the truth is just such a such an easier despite what's gone on i, I just find it such an easier place to be now yeah once the once the veil comes off once you once you've stepped out of the matrix it's uh, as you know you, you just can't go back and that's quite jarring for some people. Some people don't want to leave the bubble. Some people don't want to leave the lifestyle of, you know, having a few drinks with friends, getting drunk, going to football, whatever, whatever, you know, whatever tickles your fancy. But some people don't want to leave that. It's just it, it, they've got so comfortable with with the social media presence. They've got so comfortable with the nine to five office jobs or whatever. I'm not downplaying office jobs, by the way, but I'm just saying that people are just so, you know, they're just so comfortable in that bubble. But once you... You know, for me anyway, it was just life changing for the for the right reasons, and and I realised that why I realised why I was so unhappy. And it was do, you, do you think it's possible, Marty? I was thinking about this in the in the shower this morning. Or or why is it that why is it that certain individuals? Do you think it's possible that there's a sociopathic gene or a psychopathic gene that people are born? I mean, I mean maybe maybe a, a scientist or biologist out there would say, well, of course there is, Chris. That's what, 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 but to be so evil, I use that term, you know, lo mm. loosely, that you can drive this planet to, to destruction, pollute the ocean, lower the vibration of the planet, um, in this way to enslave mankind under false just such falsities yeah. such massive lies to keep them all to keep um, is it is it are they born psychopaths or do they understand something that maybe maybe we we don't I, I, I don't think yeah. it's the latter but I, I think everyone's born. I think everybody on this in this world in this life is born pure. They have pure love in their hearts. They have pure love in their in their soul and spirit. I think everybody is born the same. Uh, but it's all it, 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 it's a, it's all about the amount of bias and propaganda and, and lies that have have been have, that they absorb as, as as babies and children as they grow into younger adults and adults. I think it's the process of of what they experience in life which when they get to that crossroads where, as you know, about life, you make a crossroads, you either make a good decision or you make a wrong decision. And I think when people see that sometimes the wrong decision is the best decision in a sense of they gain more money or it's all about greed and, and, and gluttony. And it, it's, I think it's about humans making a choice. You either make the right decision or you make the wrong decision. And um, there's that balance between dark and light good and evil and it's all purely depends on what road you want to go down it's literally that black and white i and I, I think what what i'm sort of meaning marty is that these individuals whether they're you call the sabbatian yeah. frankists or or or, or 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 whatever this global cult that they all but seem to buy into the the esoteric knowledge behind that is quite, it's a high mm. level of knowledge. So at which point do you go, do you know what? We're all actually the same. We're, we're, you know, we are all the universe experiencing itself. So there's absolutely no point me having a beef with Marty because he's me. <laughs> It'd be, I, yeah, yeah. It would be the most stupid thing in the world for me to hate on marty because he's met with with he's the universe in that body i'm the universe in this body which is carbon yeah. molecules experiencing life because when when god was up there on his own uh it's pretty boring so he thought oh, i'm going to create this experiment called life and 
Yeah. Let, let's see who works it out. Let's see. What's the lemmings? Which which <laughs> one of them? W- you know, which one of these species? The rabbits ain't going to get it. They're all too busy eating bloody carrots. The the monkeys too busy climbing trees. But this these Homo sapiens, yeah. they they've got a chance to work it out, and 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 a few of us have. But to have that level of um, knowledge to understand this, what is essentially a big game, yeah, and to play the evil card, I, I just wonder why people do that when it's it, it's so much more fulfilling to play the, the good card. But but, but, but maybe they haven't have never experienced them um, feeling good. Maybe they've all they've experienced in life is to that moment, to that crossroads moment, all they've re- realized is. Is and also being brainwashed by generations of family members or whatever. I just feel like it just all comes down to a decision. I don't think everyone's, uh, me personally, I think everyone's wired the same going into this world. And from as, as I said before, you, we were all, we are all born pure with pure love in our hearts. I just think that it all depends on your process in life and your and your on your I wouldn't say your bringing, but what you experience um, as soon as you're born. And um, it's. Yeah, I, I, I have no answer to that. But all I can say is it all comes down to making the decision. And um, as you uh, as you know, there's people in this world who love power, lo- love love money, love love to be that top one percent in the world who controls everything, and they love it. You know, they absolutely sit there and they just they're rubbing their hands and they just love that power. And it, and it is. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've made bad decisions, and I felt a buzz from it, and. It was, although it was wrong, it made me feel good. Very, no, it dissipated very quickly. But it's, it's all part of the game, as you, as you said. It's all part of the, you know. We, 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 it sounds quite cliche, but what side of the fence are you on? Are you on the dark side or the light side? It, it, it's, it, it literally is that sort of simple. Um, and even you're making thousand decisions each day as a human you know, hundreds or thousands of decisions each day, you know, just as long as I always say, just as long as I make the right decision, more right decisions than the wrong decisions each day, then that from a, from an energy vibration point of view, that just keeps me at a certain plane, but it's hard. And like I said before, the, the journey and the, the game is, is both a bastard and a beautiful one. And it is, it's, it's when it's tough, it's tough, but when it's beautiful, it's, it's, it's absolutely incredible. Blessed to be on this side of the fence. I'll be honest with you. I'm blessed to be, you know, blessed to be out of the matrix and blessed to be um, with like-minded folk who, like I said before, when we come together collectively, it, the energy is just, it's, you can't, you can't beat it. And like I said, we're, we're, we all come with different qualities and different skill levels and we're all different personalities. But when we're together, the, the collective energy is just unbeatable. And like I said before, that's just a little micro study into what we can achieve globally. And we are, it is, it is happening, as you know, it is, there is a movement and we will, we will win eventually. It's going to be tough over the next few years, but we will, we will win eventually. The question I was asking earlier, Mark, is, is I was just wondering, is, you know, doesn't one of the Rothschilds wake up one day and go, do you know what? Actually, like, enslaving the whole planet through the financial system is maybe not for me. That's, that's a bit naughty, that is. I'm, I think I'm not going to do and do you know what they probably do? But because the, the family institution is such a corporate machine, yep. probably just get, you know, just the same as a corporation. When you start going, you know, should we really be pouring our, our, our sewage into the sea, boss? Shut up. Get rid of him. <laughs> you, yeah. you know, yeah, I, exactly. I, 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 think, I think that was maybe the answer to my question uh, yeah. about, but um. Yes, I, I I feel I feel good because I know in myself that I I'm again to use the cliche I I'm I'm winning the battle. Definition of warrior is someone who keeps trying. That's all it is. Yep. Definition of enlightened is someone that puts themselves on the track to enlightenment. That that's all, 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 all. There's no you don't get somewhere. You just acquire enough knowledge. On, on the journey for it all to make enough sense that you're not in pain anymore or you're not enslaved, or you're not suffering. And as such, the vibe you give out doesn't then put all that stuff onto, on, on, onto other people. 
Yeah. But Marnie, yeah. let's come on because you've been in Afghanistan twice. <laughs> and so again, friends at home, Marty, former uh, elite for- <laughs> elite forces, now a um, producer in the film industry, filmmaker, filmmaker. There we go. <laughs> I, I always play that up a lot more, but I, but I know Marty will, will tell me not to. So um, my understanding from our, our brief um, communications is you you had to sort of smuggle yourself in there. Yeah. And what you found is a situation that is tragic, yep. that, that, that we all, though anyone with sort of, you know, one iota of intelligence predicted 20 years ago. Um, uh, so, yeah, it, it, am I in the right sort of? Yeah, I think um, it was a passion project, really. I wanted to be fair, it was my, it was my friend James's passion project. He was, um, he'd served in Afghanistan, I think, at five tours with the Royal Marines and the SBS. He was an officer and uh, he want, he'd always wanted to go back. He had a lot of demons himself, a lot of questions to ask about his time there. And he spent five years trying to get it, get it, try and get it funded, try and get it made with the production companies in England. And uh, no one was opening doors for him. Nobody was even answering emails. He was just disheartened. So James and I met two years ago in Africa. We did a project together um, trying to get a series off the ground in, in KwaZulu Natal with the Zulu community. And uh, we just hit it off straight away. I think it was the bootneck sort of the bootneck mentality. And we just, we, it just worked. And he basically said to me, Marty, do you fancy, um, I can try and raise some private funding here. Do you, it won't be much money, but do you fancy getting over to Afghanistan in February? Uh, one of, this is the passion project. And he pitched the idea to me. And um, yeah, it, I was like, right, I'm in. You know, I've always wanted to go back. I was there in 2006, 2000, yeah, 2005, 2006, Herrick 5. And yeah, I'd always wanted to go back because I just got a sense that I didn't really get a feel for the country or for the people. And yeah, I, I'm not, not so much going back to sort of um, vanquish a lot of demons, but um, it just wanted to, to go back. So I said, yeah, so we agreed. He found, he found some money. We raised, it uh, wasn't even a micro budget, just enough to get us out there and to get us fed and to get us housed and get us get the flights. So we went over in February, end of February there. And um, we knew the approach. Um, James's dad went over in the late 80s, early 90s, and embedded himself with the Mujahideen for ITN. And it was a very much, uh, I've got a lot of war correspondent friends, old, old guys who I've always loved the, their approach to storytelling. And James and I agreed that we need to do this. We need to do this old school. We need to do a proper embed where we slip into the country. Don't tell the British embassy. Don't tell people with a, and just slip in. You know, people outside now go, oh, that's pretty naughty. And, you know, what about security and stuff? But sometimes you need a bit of courage to tell a story, to tell an authentic story. So we, um, we slipped into the country. We used local transport, local fixes. Um, the, our, our colleague, Kaiba, who's a British Afghan, he's actually one of the, he, he, he went viral on YouTube called Unseen Afghanistan. He did a lot of drone stuff. So he did drone work in 2015 onwards and he became a viral sensation. And James approached him and said, you fancy working with us on this? You know, you, you've got a drone and you've also got, um, you, know, you know, the land, you know, the people, you know, the areas. And uh, he said, yeah. And the three of us came together. So we got two, two former Royal Marines and an Afghan Brit. And we just came together. And it, from, the day, from day one, it just worked. It was incredible. Um, it was an incredible partnership and still is to this day. And so, Marty, and, Marty, before you go any further, am I able to clarify who James is for our... Yeah, James Glancy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So James has been on the, um, been on the podcast, former Royal Marines, SBS of Special Boat Service, Special Forces Officer. Um, it was quite interesting when James came on the podcast. I hope I'm okay to say this. Yeah, yeah, go for it. But he said, um, he said, Chris, I don't want to talk about Afghanistan. I went, yeah. mate, I get it. False yeah. flag operation in a, in a, in a major city <laughs> off the back of that 20 years of illegal conflict. Yeah. Nation bombed back into this, you know, the nation that was under the developed as it was bombed back into the stone age, million, millions of, of, of deaths. 
I, I get it. We'll we'll leave that. He went. No, I just like didn't want to talk about Afghanistan. <laughs> he's so positive. He's so positive mate. Yeah, uh, and, and uh, it's at that point you you like this is this for friends. This that's when you go. Oh, yeah. Ma- Matrix moment. Well, he's had he's had he's had twelve months with me, so I'm starting to break break chip away at that little uh, that puss's wall. So, um, yeah, no, it's um, he he is he he is starting to um. Obviously, after the after the second trip, which we'll talk about in a minute, he was very much like, "What the hell is going on here?" So um, to, cut, to go back to February, so we, had, we we it was a very quick two week shoot. We had tracking beacons up. We had a security firm in London monitoring us twenty four seven. We had security. Uh, we had beacons, um, security. Um, basically, beacons on us, James and I, um, transmitting straight to back to London, etc. Everything was thought out. You know, James and I have a certain skill set as well. We, we we're obsessed with security and safety. So it wasn't like we just jumped in and, and fired from the hip. We just, we, we, everyone was thought out. Everything. We, the reason why we didn't use armored vehicles is because when we went, as, as a lot of people know in the security industry and even the military, you drive through a rural village in an armored vehicle, they're going to know it's someone important in that vehicle. And you get a lot of dickers, a lot of eyes on the, on the vehicle. So we, if, if we had to have an armored vehicle, we'd always be the vehicle behind in, in a civilian, in a Corolla or whatever it was behind. And we, that, that was just how we operated. And um, it was, I'll tell you now, mate, the first trip was optimistic. The people were optimistic. The people were beautiful. They were so welcome. And they, 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 they'd see James and I rock up in local, local attire and ha, like the Afghan Pakur. And it, it was just, they were mesmerized that we were here. And that we, you know, there was no entourage. It was just James and I and Kyber rocking up with cameras and microphones. And it was literally like, they just couldn't believe we were there telling their story, which was, you know, um, I can tell you now, if we, if, we, if we would have done this with a big production company, what would have happened was we would have flown into Kabul. James and I would have been housed in a hotel room and we would have been drip fed people that they wanted us to speak to. So obviously singing up the same narrative, the same script. So it would have been so artificial and so fake. It just wouldn't have worked. Hence why we chose this embed approach, this old school embed approach. So we interviewed female mountaineers, female skiers, female governors, beautiful optimism, lots of strength there, lots of uh, hope for the future. And we came back with, we knew we came back with an unfinished film, but in a sense, it was a nice warm up for us. We knew that, yeah, this, there's definitely a film here. There's definitely a feature length, feature documentary film here, cinematic. It, it was it was all shot beautifully in 4K and loads of beautiful drone work. But the story was there, which was the important thing. So we came back, we did a little trailer, and we put it out to all these production companies again. And then next minute, you can imagine the sharks around the boat, around the chum boat, and we're basically just, we're, 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 we're just, sticking them over, we're smashing them away from the boat with big, large sticks because now they're interested because we've proven that one, we can do what we, we promised and two, it, the story's there and, and the footage looks incredible. So now they're set, starting to circle the boat and James and I are like, nah, we're still not interested. You, We needed somebody interested a year ago or two years ago. There's, there's, you know, you didn't you didn't have trust in us then, so why should we have trust in you coming in now in, in such a in such halfway through a production? So we stood our ground and we managed to raise more money to get out for the second trip. And the second trip was just after the Biden announcement that the that they would withdraw the U.S. troops in September. And don't get me wrong, the Afghan government knew the U.S. were fight, we were going to withdraw eventually, but when we got back there, the Taliban had already increased their attacks. A um, lot more attacks happening. We lost four people who helped us in the first trip. They were assassinated between the three months, between the two trips. We'd already lost um, three or four, I think it was four people who had helped us with the last film. They were oh. soldiers uh, um, for being soldiers, for being in government, for being positive and hopeful. And they were wiped out. They were assassinated. So the assassinations had increased. Because of the Biden announcements, the whole country was up in arms. Not up in arms, but they were just getting ready for the withdrawal in September, which was fine. It was, it, it, they knew it was coming, and they were all preparing themselves. Um, Taliban were increasing their attacks. They were winning the propaganda war, and they still are winning the propaganda war. You go on Twitter now, and it's like 90% of the districts have been taken up. That's all bullshit. So um, as any, 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 any military audience members will know when they're in Afghanistan, what used to happen in Afghanistan is we used to kick the Taliban out of a village. 
hand it back over to the police. And you know, within three weeks, the Taliban had taken it over again. It was like this yo-yo, this, this yo-yo um, effect. And it's exactly the same right now with the ANA and the AMP is it's just it's just a yo-yo effect with 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 dom- dominating ground out there, and it's and it, it's that's going to continue for a, a while now. So, Marty, so, I just I just need to yeah clarify this because even I, I I'm ba- basically yeah. aware of the situation over there and the military strategies, etc. And even I find it hard to to follow. So, my my, my sort of understanding all along was. The second that, that the West pulls out, say the West and its allies pulls out, the Taliban are just going to come back out, take over everything as they always did, and nothing will have changed except the fact that they've just been subjected to a horrendous military campaign of, of death and destruction for 20 years, yeah. uh, uh, along with all the other military campaigns of death and destruction that poor country has had to had to undergo are we saying that is the case or that's not the case so i think originally there was never going to be a full withdrawal there was always, they were always going to leave um liaison officers and trainers and, and air assets in the country so what's happened is they've spent 20 years the coalition troops have spent 20 years training the afghan army and the afghan police well mainly the army and the special forces to train a certain way They've been trained over the 20 years to like, just like Western tactics, to go out on the ground, go into a contact, call in air support, artillery, mortars, whatever it is. Okay, That's fine when, when the assets are there. But by withdrawing all the air assets, you've basically, you know, you, you've, pulled, you've, you've pulled a very, very important aspect of strategy there in the sense that the Afghans now with special forces are going out on raids, but they don't have the air support anymore. Or they have redu- massively reduced their support. So, what, why, why train? Why train them like in that sort of strategy? Why, why train? Why train them in that sort of, in those tactics? If you if if you knew you were going to pull the air assets away twenty years on, it was just it's absolutely daft. So, what's happened is, and what what made James and I sick to our stomach, and really made us un- uneasy is 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 whilst we were there in July a few weeks ago, they the Americans especially slipped out the back door in the middle of the night. So they didn't leave, they didn't leave in September as they were planned. They slipped out the back door um, in the middle of the night in something like, it was early July, I think it was 3rd or 4th of July, you know. Um, so, and they left all their vehicles. They even scrapped a lot of their own kit rather than hand it to the Afghans. They scrapped it all and left scrapyards of kit. James and I and Kyber actually walked through a scrapyard near Bagram Air Base and it's just disgusting. They've left everything. They've scrapped everything. Not, they didn't even hand it over. You've got uh, U.S. military gear everywhere. You've got. Oh, it's just disgusting to watch. It's a very. It just makes you sick to see this Bagram Air Base, and it's full of scrap. And they slipped out without telling anybody, so the government couldn't plan. So now the government's on its arse because the 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 A and A checkpoints and and and. They're just not all, they're disorganized. So hence why the Taliban are, are taking advantage and hence why the Taliban are, are, are gaining a lot of ground. And it's frustrating to see. And then you see, and then you hear, because we're on the ground speaking to authentic, authentic people and authentic voices. You're, not, you're, not, you're now hearing stories about soldiers aren't even getting paid until six to nine months time because of corruption in the government. And it's, it's widespread. So then, so when you when you hear stories of of why the Taliban are taking over checkpoints, it's because the soldiers don't want to fight because they're not getting paid and there's no leadership. It's an absolute mess. So the big thing in the film, the big thing for us in the film is we're going over to question the overall strategy. And he's and I don't want to spoil it for the film, but you, your audience needs to know this. Twenty trillion dollars has been spent in two, in twenty years. The whole purpose of the occupation in October twenty years ago was to get rid of Al Qaeda and bin Laden, was to wipe out the heroin problem and was to wipe out the Taliban. All right. The facts are, and I know this because I was in the country a week ago to the day, Taliban are stronger and more equipped than ever before and everyone's ever seen before, purely because of the Pakistan intelligence and the Iranian intelligence involvement. 
They have been waiting for this moment for 20 years. They, they, they do a great waiting game, the Taliban. They do it well, and they've always done it well. If you look at history and with the Russians, etc. So they, they, they are having a great time right now. They, everything's coming to plan. I will never forgive Trump for releasing 5,000 Taliban prisoners. I will never forgive him for that. Okay, you could say, you say how great he is, and I will never, ever, ever forgive him for releasing 5,000 Taliban prisoners who went straight back onto the front line. I will never forgive him for that. And 80% of the world's heroin is still grown out of Afghanistan to this day. And Al-Qaeda, Bin Laden's lot, are stronger and more equipped than ever. And you've got to sit there and stand there and ask yourself, what was it all worth? What, you know, it just makes you sick. And I can guarantee you now, nobody will be held accountable for that $20 trillion spent. And you, you, don't, see, you don't see it. Okay, there's a few well repaired roads around Kabul and Bagram Air Base and you, the, the roads are a little bit better. However, let's just get back to, to, the, to what we found. It just made us sick to the stomach. And we're not questioning why veterans were there. I mean, uh, we were all there and we did, you know, we, I'll be honest with you, we kicked the Taliban's ass when we were there. It's, we were not questioning that at all, at all. We're just questioning the overall strategy and so much money and so much death. And the country's been at war for 43 years. And as, as, as you know, it's so, it's so much more beneficial for the, peop for the people who run this world for a country to remain in war. You know, they make so much money from a, an area which is in conflict, as you know. So it's just, it's gonna, the film's going to ruffle a lot of feathers it's for, for the right reasons. It's going to be, um, it'll be finished in three months and I'd love to come back on when it's finished and, 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 and talk more about the release, et cetera. But it, it's a passion project, which, which turned into this. Well, we're just, we're just, we're literally just questioning the, the, the occupation, the strategy for the occupation, the motive behind the occupation. And it was an occupation in October. We're just questioning the, we're going back to day one of why we were there and we're questioning 20 years on. And, we're, and we, have, we have the results and we have the evidence that so much money was spent, and so much death, you know, and, and no one will be held accountable. That's, that, that's the, that is the frustrating thing. We know, we, we know this, uh, the way the world works. Uh, we're, ju we're, just raising, we're just raising light to these basic, these basic issues um, of, of, well, mainly motives of why we invaded in that country in the first place. I mean, just, just, keep, just keep eyes on the country now. I think Afghanistan, I think uh, just... I'd love to ask your audience members, where do you think the next US-UK war will be? And I, on, I, I believe China, China now will come into the Afghanistan territory. There's so much beautiful minerals in the country. Not, not, not opium, obviously. There's op opium will always, always be there and always be a great provider of, 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 of illegal income. But there's so much beautiful minerals in that country which hasn't been mined yet. I, I believe China will slip into Afghanistan over the next sort of five years. And then I'd love to know where your audience think the UK and US sort of eyes, eyes and sort of strength stroke influence will, will move towards. I, I dread to think where, where they want to go next because that's what it's all about. It's about swinging the sights to somewhere else and, 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 to, and, and to gain and, and to basically extract as much um, from that area as possible. So I, I, I'm scared to, to think where, where they're going to swing their sights to next. Yes, have you read, read up much, Marty, on the Belt and Road Initiative? No. Uh, this, is, this is something I think we all need to get more familiar with. It's uh, In my rudimentary terms of explanation, it's basically a, a sort of super highway that spreads from, from Europe across the Middle East and into yeah. China it's it's a well like i say a super highway of technology goods services etc cetera, etc cetera, um between between china china and and europe and other countries are brought into play for example australia have just opted out of it which i don't I don't know how that fits into the game because you generally don't tend to tend to um get to opt out of the new world order but but that's a bit bit the same with brexit <coughs> these these things seem to occur yeah um and as such it means that certain places 
uh, in that region becomes of strategic importance. Yeah. Um, the we because the, the mainstream media is so powerful, we're led to believe that China's the bad guy and yeah. that, that Russia, yeah. he's a he, they're a bit of a wolf, and then we've got the yeah. good old West because we're you know we and my it's all it's all a sh- I, I, I'm just putting this out there. We, you know, what if it's all a sham? What if it's not? What if it's none of that? What if it that's just yeah. put out through the media because the whole show is being controlled by yeah. an elitist group of individuals that yeah. control China, that control Europe, yeah. that control the United States. They've got this super highway set up for their um, Orwellian agenda to create yeah. the three superpowers. So your Eurasia, Europa, and East Asia or what, what, whatever, it, all in this constant state of war, um, which is what we seem to be building towards. Um, and then when you look into Belt and Road, then you start to th- see things like the Suez Canal becomes of importance as the seaway, as opposed to you have a, a, the goods coming across land and you have the alternative sea route. And what we're seeing now, of course, is a buildup of military interest in East Africa mm-hmm. with Mozambique starting to appear in, appear in the news um, e- uh, more, more and more. And this this kind of thing. Then you have talk of the European army, which is now a reality. It's not a it's no longer a um, theoretical thing. If you look at all of the top top brass in the military, not only do they all now have their photos next to the European, the, the, the yellow stars on the blue blue background flag, but in the rhetoric that they've obviously been told to, to put out, it's all about, yes, we must work with our allies to strengthen the... Da, 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 and it's all European army speak. Again, yeah. it's all, all Orwellian New World Order. Oh, yeah. um, yes, it, it, it becomes interesting. Um, I, I, I believe we're heading into the second year of a 10-year globalist agenda. That, that, I mean, that, that's my ind- individual personal belief that by 2030, they want the whole world uh, globalized. I mean, that's just, that's not me being, you know, a, a, a crack sort of conspiracy theorist. I'm just, believe nothing, believe, believe nothing you read, believe, believe nothing that you see and and and. and and listen to i just feel like i know that we're heading into in, into a we are in a globalist agenda right now and they couldn't have been happier with the first year the first two years anyway they they, they they're sat up there they're rubbing their hands they couldn't have been happier with the progress made within the first two years because i i feel in that 10 year 10 year plan they would have had it like oh it's going to take a good five years to really break these break the population the world population down but no the first two years they couldn't have been happier and it's frustrating to see even now with the whole point of the uh, i'll call them v passports it's it's uh it's scary to see how how quickly people have conformed to something that's so obvious to the people that can see it you know what i mean it, 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 i just feel like we are already in this People could say we've been in, in this um, agenda for a, long, a lot longer than um, two years, but I feel they've really amped up, really amped up the agenda now um, for a 2030 target. But I think they're going to smash that well before 2030. You can see what's happened. You can physically see the esoteric, the depraved and big finance came together to create this, to, this, this world system. And, and yeah, it's, it's working, but they underestimated me, Marty. I'll tell you that, and they under- mm. underestimated you. And they're not they they can't win. They can't win. I know they're under the. Uh, it, it's possible to think because yeah, you know, went out my run this morning, ran past the petrol station. The amount of people still uh, doing the thing. <laughs> who you know believe that the the the, the bogeyman is going to get the, it 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 yeah it can appear quite disheartening 
Um, yeah. But just just a lot of like I said earlier on the, in the podcast, just a lot of lost, a lot of lost souls. A lot of, there's a lot of lost spirits, and it's not their fault. It's just that the way the system is is, is created and um, the way they've been born into this world, they're, they're lost. You know, it's it's not to do with them. That you know, I'm going back to this sort of we are all one, and uh, you know, it's yeah. I've just channeled myself, channeled a lot of the energy into me now, and and to protect me and, the, and my children, which they are the future. And, um, yeah, it's, it, when you, when you're on, when you're on this side of the fence, it's, it's just beautiful. It's, it's blessed to be here, mate. I'm blessed to be with you and be with like-minded people as well to sort of, it gets lonely very quickly. And, um, the more people can come together, even if it's just an email or a phone call or a text message, just to say, look, you know, hang in there or, you know, fancy a chat or fancy a debrief someday or let just sometimes because you, you can you can it gets pent up it, it yeah it's all about energy and vibration and and i've learned so much over the 15 months of being on the last podcast and um, learned a lot about myself uh, i've still got a long way to go but it's been an incredible incredible process yes it's hard when when you you first have that epiphany of, of that things ain't right that that's yeah. some, someone slipping you a mickey right yeah and you go through a transition phase from from being from realizing oh my god I, i've just been lied to my my whole life is is, is yeah, a yeah. lie yeah, yeah and i'm saying this for for people that are there do just just it's it's all good it's yeah. all part of the process you are going to feel alone and the reason is yeah. it takes a while to stop digging your ice axes into the old network and wondering why it's not working for you it's called it's probably referred to as many things and you'll you can read all about this i'm sure in eastern philosophy but the way to think of it is you have your third dimension that's your your matrix People waking up, they think life is this way, go and do their job, come home, fish and chips in front of the telly, do the same thing next day, get the information from the BBC, the, the good old BBC. <laughs> you know, you, you have that. Then you have the people that realise that that's, that's not the way the world is. Um, and they're, 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 this is called fourth, fourth dimension. The problem would be, and then you have fifth dimension, Yours truly. <laughs> right. Okay. It, it's all a bit subjective, but the fifth dimension is those that have realized you're never going to make sense of the world. If you keep trying to employ third dimension logic, <laughs> right? If you want to step out of the matrix, you have to leave it behind. And this is why people go, yeah, I talk to my family and they call me like a tinfoil hat and I don't, I don't speak to them anymore. And, and this, yeah. and we've all, we've all been there and, and it's all good. It's all, it's all absolutely fine. You're just transitioning from needing that affirmation from the old network to suddenly realizing that your affirmation doesn't come from individuals or people, although it's lovely to have like-minded people like Mar Marty in, you know, in, 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 in your sphere, your affirmation comes from the universe. All the answers are there. And once you stop thinking as Chris Rule or as Marty or as, Hey, you know, I've got this baseball cap and I wear, I wear rap clothes because it makes me so cool. When, once you dis in, disengage yourself from that, I bought this shirt because it was cheap and go outdoors it's that it's it's you know once you can disengage and start to draw your energy from the universe and draw your understanding um you just you're you 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 go to the next level and then it becomes so much clearer and easier and when people say yeah that chris rule <laughs> do you know me but i mean maybe they don't say that I, but but two things happen. One, you understand them because they're you, you are them and you, they are you. So you don't, you're not going to hate upon them, right? That, that would be silly to hate yourself. But the other thing is, is what, what Martin, I was saying earlier is you start to become a force to be reckoned with. People see you on your Instagram and you're like happy every day. 
and you're not posting pictures of Mercedes and Porsches and, and you know, what does my bum look like this week and all, all that kind of narcissistic left brain ego fueled stuff that keeps you trapped in the matrix. And they go, actually, this guy's just like happy going out for a run. He's like eats ve- vegetables <laughs> yeah. and, 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 and he wouldn't change. He like doesn't get pissed every night. What, what, what does he know that, that, and, and this is the, I think this is the, the vibe that we start to give off Marty, isn't it? Yeah. The, the, the vibration. Yeah. It's, um, it, it was amazing. Even with my own family members, when I told them I wasn't, I didn't drink alcohol anymore. It was just this. And I obviously explained to them that alcohol made me suicidal and alcohol suppressed me and, and, always slipped me into a massive depression afterwards you know it was it didn't make sense to keep drinking it was just unheard, it was just unheard of but even even so it's still even even telling friends and family this about how alcohol has an effect that that specific effect on me um they were still sort of like still not pushing the alcohol but they were still couldn't understand even though i explained to them what the negative side effects are um, to, to, to take in the substance and alcohol has a lot to answer for um, especially in this world for me alcohol used to suppress me it suppressed me so much that I was just so miserable and so embedded in the matrix and um, yeah that's just my individual journey but yeah it's um, yeah for me alcohol it, it was was a massive negative factor in, in this whole journey and once you break free of those chains and you look back at alcohol and alcohol and the demon, the demonic name alcohol, and it's just you start going down that rabbit hole. You're like, wow, can't believe it. You know, you, you think about like coming of a coming of age of um, a British boy is going to the pub with his dad when he's 18 or even earlier to get a pint. You know, and I've worked in Africa and I've worked around the world and a coming of age of, of, of a young adult is, is going out and hunting or going out and camping and, and living off the land for a few days and, and proving yourself to your father uh, that you are strong and that you are able to, to defend your family and to be a good warrior and, 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 to be, and, and to be have a good mindset and look at how a coming of age um, process happens in the UK, for example, is, is getting pissed with your dad. You know, and the, it's not your dad's fault. That's what your dad's been tr- taught. That's what your dad's been brainwashed with. That's what your grandparents have been brainwashed with. But I want to be a stalker who, as a parent, want, is going to nip that in the bud right now. And I'm not saying and I, I, my, my children, when they're old enough, will have will choose for themselves. But I want to make sure that that way of responding to alcohol and the way you accept it in your life is going to be more of an education than than something that you just try yourself and 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 you work your way through it i want to be a generation that tells my children that joining the military is not necessarily the right choice and here is why but again it's up to you to make that decision when you're old enough i want to be a generation that gets my children asking questions more gets my children to seek the truth more to, to look for alternative sources of information. So there's a, there's a, there's a lot that I've, I'm learning as a parent and an individual as well, which I want to pass on to my children. But they've got, they've, they've, I mean, we thought, we think our generation's had it tough and even the generation before us have had it tough. I think our generation, our younger generation now, have got a really tough, tough journey ahead, especially with the digital world. And I'm always trying hard to keep that balance with my kids with nature and digital and I understand that, you know, why I still need to have digital um, in their lives because of the way the world is going. But I don't want to get into this, but um, yeah, we've got, I think it comes down to what you teach your children. And um, yeah, I, I just think I've learned so much. I'm still learning. I'm still really early on in my journey. I'm very early on. And um, what I've experienced, especially over the last two years, has been just, you know, well, it's been life changing for me. Yes, clearly, clearly. And, you're looking really well on it. Well, that's the, the Afghan tan. So, <laughs> uh, um, what one final thing that, that um, then Marty, I, I was yep. going to actually do this as a just a sole podcast on my own because yeah, yeah. I, but perhaps we can cover it between the two. I'm getting asked a lot, yeah, by some people that are quite upset. Okay. 
Um, not an area I suggest you go in life. No point getting upset about a, 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 anything, but but people clearly message me and say, Chris, this is, and, 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 and yes, when you look out the window, it, it, it can seem as though we're losing. But it's not. It, 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 you have to think of the, the, long, the long game. But one of the questions I get asked, Marty, is when are the military coming to rescue us? And I thought between the two of us, we could perhaps explain to people why yep. um, when you join the military, it's because you're at a certain time in your life where your brain works in a certain way. And so that life appeals to you. And then you're subject to essentially taking orders and, and carrying them out. And yeah, I just think it's a good educate. It could be a good educational um, point. Yeah. What, what, why, when we're facing m- tyranny on a scale that i've never seen before in my 51 years when clearly the narrative that's being put out by mainstream media makes no sense at all it's so utterly not just changing day by day but it's so utterly illogical that this should be the way and again i'm not using any of the buzzwords or keywords here but that the way that we're living should be the way that takes humanity forward little little just just a couple of little points there when i was young you dropped something on the floor you just picked it up and ate it right why because your parents realized getting grungy getting a bit of dirt in your system getting a few foreign foreign bacteria that's actually really in in the long term not just good for you but good for the the um longevity of the species of the of the planet uh if you had a kid at school maybe they got chicken pox you'd have a chicken pox party you'd all take your kids to that house so that they could all get a bit of it and then strength again strengthen their sit what we didn't have was that kid in that house over there has got chicken right everybody let's wrap our children in cotton wool let's cover them in cellophane and cling film Let's lock them in a vault. Let's put that vault at a certain distance away. This is just one example of many, Marty, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Utter, utter insanity of what, of what is being allowed to prevail because people are so sub- submissive to, to what they perceive as authority, but yeah. what in truth is a total lack of authority. Um. A lot, a lot, a lot of my sort of, especially my Royal Marine friends or military friends, can't get their head around the fact that Marty here, ex Royal Marine, believes that any free human being doesn't need a monarchy. It just, it just, it, they're bewildered by that sort of ethos and thought process. But no, I, I, I believe any human being on this world doesn't need a monarchy, doesn't need an elitist system. We are all free. We are all one. And people need to stop thinking about. People need to stop waiting for the men in military uniform to arrive and to save the day. You know, the people need to stop wait, waiting for these knights in big shiny armor to come in and save them. What they need to do is we are all warriors ourselves. We are all spiritually, we are all warriors who have been suppressed from the moment we are born. We are born into this world with pure love and pure devotion to this earth. And what happens is, like I said before, is you lose sight of that. You lose your strength. You lose your pure, you know, your sense of purpose in this world. And um, but we are all warriors. And I would suggest anybody. And I, I, I can, I know now. There's be audience members listening to this right now, knowing I've always thought that about myself. I always thought that I was different. I always thought that I was stronger than I am. And you are. Everyone is stronger than they are. It's because they've been brainwashed and suppressed for so long. And I would advise anybody now to start creating groups and get around the fire at night and to talk and to collectively come together and to just for your own sanity and, and, and mindset is to start creating groups and communities. I'm not saying groups to, you know, pick up pitchforks and go and storm, you know, parliament. I'm saying just come together in nature 
and just get back to where we used to be, the roots of, of, of where we used to be. And we are all, every single one of us on this, in, on this, on this beautiful earth and in this beautiful universe are warriors by spirit. We are all, okay, we all have different qualities which we bring, but fundamentally we are all warriors. And it sounds cheesy and it sounds something you'll hear an American Indian say, or it's go back to those warriors in time and, and their ethos and their, and, and their, and their, and their way of thinking. And it, it, it has never changed for thousands of years. Hence why the plant medicines have never changed for thousands of years compared to pharmaceuticals who've been around for a hundred years. It, it, it all makes sense. But yeah, f- f- uh, you know, number one, we are all, all warriors by spirit. And two, we all need to come together. And if, it, if it's just three of years, four of years, even two of years who start coming together at the weekend or in, the, in an evening, one evening a night or one evening a month, it's, it's enough for now to to come together and to, and, and to and to and to be like i said from day one collect, collectively when we come together we are unstoppable individually we are powerful but collectively we are unstoppable and if you can do that locally in it, with, a, with a small group of, and then which spreads then so be it let it spread let it spread like wildfire because that's that's spiritually that's where we are going at the moment we are we will we will overcome we will we will dominate and we will win and it's not about winning or losing as you mentioned it, it or defeating or prison in prisoning people it's just about the journey the light will always always overcome darkness and uh, like i said for me personally what's ha- what's really really happened to me and really helped me is coming together with like-minded people it's very very as you mentioned before very lonely it's a very lonely world and by coming together it gives you that strength to yes i'm not on my own here and yes we're on the right path so that that's my sort of closing remarks anyway when you're a you're a toddler you're a baby whatever it you, you're born in your in into left brain thinking and it's very helpful because you want your nappy change. You want to breastfeed. Da, da. It's like, yeah, yeah, I want, I want, I want, I want. And that's helpful when, when you're young. As you grow older and you would have had to fit in with the, the tribe, you'd have had to learn to move to your right brain, which is your empathy, your kindness, your understanding, basically not being selfish because, again, it, it's all about su- su- supporting your people. But if you keep, can keep people in the left brain, they don't then develop these qualities. So left brain is matrix, right brain is freedom. Now you take those youngsters at 16 years old or possibly 17 or 18 um, and you show them this glossy magazine brochure and this amazing career in the military and and. You're going to be on the side of righteousness and truth and justice. And that's all incredibly appealing if all you've known all your life is a good guy and a bad guy narrative thrust at you from Hollywood. And if you come from a disenfranchised background yourself, which very many service people do, You've never known stability in your, in your life. And, and let's be honest, you've lacked the love of your parents at the time in your life. You needed it the most. You yeah. seek that affirmation. You want to be loved. You want to prove yourself. You want to be respected by your peers instead of feeling that kind of inadequate young boy in the playground that maybe got bullied a bit or maybe was a bully, et cetera, et cetera. So this recruiting office just seems, wow, Oh, I'm through that door. I'm going to be a man. Well, of course, as Marty said, being a man or a woman, it's nothing to do with picking up a gun. To become a warrior, it means you set foot on a path to, in, to, to enlightenment. And so to answer this question, that I'm getting asked an awful lot. No, the military are never coming to rescue you. The, with the possibility of a coup, if they respect the person that's instigated the coup enough, maybe yes, they will. They they will follow that. But by is it violence begets violence, or some other pithy but clever saying? Um, so as this is not to say that all military people are left brain, not you know, and, and don't have the ability to sort of have empathy. But it's it is to say that 
kind of like the majority. I think it's as Marty has, has, has picked up on, the, it kind of goes with the territory. If you want one set of carbon molecules for absolutely no real reason to go and annihilate another set of carbon molecules in order that some elitist banking families can just get even more power for their sick and greedy games, right? You can't have that set of molecules thinking in its right brain because it's going to go, fuck that for a game of soldiers. That's my mate. He's me. What, why would I kill him? It's so stupid. It doesn't, yep. it achieves nothing other than to just perpetuate this violence that, that pervades the planet. It, it's ludicrous, right? Well, do military people think like that? Or do they say, yeah, man, there's a war. I, I, want, I want to go into action. I want to put my, my, my skill set to, to, to good use because there's good guys and there's, there's bad guys, right? And sorry, I'm being a, a, a little bit, uh, don't wish, wish to be too facetious, but I'm just trying to put it in terms that, that we, in like Hollywood-like terms that we can all sort of understand. And when you see the, demonstrators or protesters maybe they're on a march because they they're right-brained thinkers they love humanity like marty said for us it's about the children that's it we don't care about our lives we're just a set of molecules doesn't really matter but the children haven't had their lives yet no. they don't deserve to be born into slavery and to be uh, manipulated from birth and to have the things like the travel which is now no go mm -hmm. Oh yeah, but it is, Chris. You just yeah, you've just got to do the thing, haven't you? And then you that that's not freedom, folks, right? Yeah, I think I think I think I'm sure your audience now are, are familiar with what your belief system is anyway, which is great. So no, I think I think just um, really final final remarks is just just hang in there. Those are those of you who know something's not right and. Are on the are on the same journey Chris and I are on. You just got kind of to hang in there. I'm not. You know, we've lost too many good people, especially recently, um, to to the system, and that's the real pandemic for me. Is is the mental health um, destruction and the and, and the addiction rise. So um, yeah, that's that's the real pandemic. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm I just don't want to be. You know, uh, last year I was sat two times talking a, a guy down from killing himself. So. I just don't want to be, you know, I want to, I want to be in a world which we don't have to do that. It's, it's, it, it sounds like a dream sort of scenario, but for those of us who, who feel lonely, just like I said before, you know, use Chris's platform to, to communicate with each other, use the community to get together and get around, like I said, get around the fire in nature. And there's nothing better than being around the fire at night, especially with like-minded folk and being in nature. And it's, it's just something beautiful and, something um yeah you just feel that connection straight away and um yeah get out there and just even if it's once a week once a month whatever it is just just make that connection with other people and um feel free to reach out to me as well um um marty stalk at gmail.com especially if it's um interested in any plant medicines in, in in the uk or in ireland i've got a lot of good contacts so um yeah yeah um thanks for having me on mate i uh, love you brother Yes, just stay on the line, Marty, because it's something I need to, to ask you. But much love to you, Marty, and your family. And, and you're, it's so good to see somebody doing that, you know, taking such positive action. Um, friends at home, massive love to you all. I hope this has made sense. Please don't be getting upset. We, we, we're a truth channel. It's, it's that. And, and sometimes the truth is hard for us to, to take in. I mean, it, it's... It might not be your, your truth or it might not be your truth for another 20 years. And then you might go, oh, my God, do you know what? I watched this podcast like 20 years ago. There was two guys were saying this. They were saying this. And I just thought bloody Tim Fawat nonsense. Da, 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 da. Yeah. So so we, we don't mean to offend anyone. We're both veterans. We're very proud of uh, that. We're both um you know, part of the, 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 the military family. I think we both learned a lot from it. But in order to be a warrior, you have to do what's right for the children. It, it's just that simple. And so we have to say what we need to say. So that's it. We'll see you next time.